Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, oh, we relax, we take that midweek break, try to talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the Linux Linosphere. Linosphere, man, that's probably a trademark thing. Don't sue us. I'm Vin. <laughs> that's chill. And everybody watching is live. Twitch.com, not Twitch.com. What is Twitch? Why do you not have Twitch.com yet? Twitch.tv. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I am old. I am partially senile. And more than once I've tried to, I was on somebody else's browser. I didn't go to Twitch. And I'm like, here's our Twitch thing. And like after the third time, I'm like, right. Twitch.tv. Yeah. That's where I got to go. Mm -hmm. But here we are. Here you are listening to us uh, after the fact or live. Jill, you're going back to Disneyland. I'm surprised. Are, are you not full of Disneyland? Yeah. I've not been like, no, <laughs> no, I'm good. Just like lay back. <laughs> nah, man. I've well, I've actually missed it a few more weeks than usual. Usually I'm there monthly, but because of scale, it kind of, you know, put it on hold for a while. I had to take care of a lot of things for scale and all the excitement and preparedness and then recovering after. So this weekend is my recovery at Disneyland. <laughs> and what I'm, does one do to recover at Disneyland? Oh boy, have a really nice dinner. And watch the fireworks and the shows and go on some rides when it's cooler at night. It's nicer. <laughs> right on. Right yeah. on. I had an mm -hmm. adventurous, uh, like, last hour. Oh. <laughs> what? I heard a plane, I think. I heard one of those big trucks going by. Oh, okay. They're cutting the tops of trees because, That's you right. know. Yeah, I'm like, grr, you evil trees. And we were waiting on that just a minute ago. I was like, what else can go? Oh, there, there's something else out. Nothing went terribly wrong. I'll spare you the long story. It's always DNS. Always DNS. I'm going to that again. But a couple of things happened this week. A couple of things I was talking about in the pre-show. Gnome has turned 25 years old. Gnome has been up 25 years. Yeah. That is crazy, isn't it? <laughs> It is, Ben. You remember the days, the first uh, GNOME desktop where you saw the, the GNOME troll foot was the wallpaper? <laughs> that was, was so cute. Yeah. I never really was attracted to GNOME, even like I know <laughs> I tangled with it out of curiosity back in the 1X days. And I uninstalled it a lot in the 2X days because it was shipping with Solaris and um, it, yeah. it would be on like an Ultra 5 and an Ultra 10. I'm like, these are not powerful enough to run GNOME CD. It is. Mm -hmm. and um, But yeah, just I think it's been out 25 years. But it's just a wee young lad compared yeah. to Debian, which celebrated its 29th birthday this year. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And that was one of my first distros after it was actually... Uh, between Red Hat and Debian, I started using around the same time. But Debian, I started in 1993 after mm -hmm. Slackware. <laughs> I think we all started with Slack back in the day. And yeah. I had went from Slack to Red Hat. I forget if it was like Red Hat 3 or Red Hat 4. Yeah. At the time when I moved over to that because Red Hat had everyone beat in the installation department they had that super slick in curses based like doop, 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 doop. you could just put it on and this was back in the days uh i mean the story stays the same even today if you're installing linux you're going to break it why because mm -hmm. you're playing with things you're learning how to yeah. do things now hopefully you are learning how to do things instead of like windows style nuke and pave every single time because you're not learning anything like that i think a lot of it back then was it was like storage and getting it installed. You did once you got everything set up, you didn't have an extra drive to back anything up on. You're like, yeah, Oh exactly. no, man, I'm not losing this. I will spend a week trying to get everything back up and running. I'm looking at you, yeah. Wex. That was usually over the weekends, but yeah, just like how things have changed. And here I am back on Debian in 2022. And that's just like what I'm rolling around in. Hey, it's the, it's, the stable stable big daddy of all linux distros really i mean i mean it's it, the foundational distro for so many other distros <laughs> it is yeah. um jordan was talking about at his work he was like yeah debian 11 is pretty good isn't it mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i i, I yeah. didn't end up on debian for everything in the studio because i was throwing darts at a wall um if you want you know, it's a, effectively the most up-to-date LTS that you can really get your hands on. 
Mm-hmm. And um, I know, I, I look forward to your feedback from people who completely disagree with me. A couple other things I was playing around with, though. This was the entirety of Monday. Yeah. That wow. All <laughs> I did on Monday. OBS 28 is out. I got it to build, but I needed. It's one of the catches is what you're looking at on the left there. That is a web interface for like setting up. I use BitFocus Companion to control the stream deck, which is how I switch the shows. You know, I press the buttons and OBS has WebSockets 5.0. It is not backwards compatible. I hit up the guy who maintains the OBS module mm-hmm. for BitFocus Companion like a week ago. And he got back and he's like, hey, I got to build up. I pushed it out to beta which caused the problem of like the hard mode is I have a bit focus running on the raspberry Pi back in the rack and it just controls the stream deck. It's like, how do I get that on a beta channel? There's no documentation on the entirety of the internet on how to do that. Oh boy. So that was the first half of the day. And I finally am like, you know what, let me just try a new image. And, uh, turns out the first time you run an update, you will, blaze over it because it's not highlighted it'll give you an option to pick which channel you want to update from it's like aha and i finally got it and i had to do a little more playing back and forwards left and right but we finally got everything up and running and uh, no captions this week because that's still in the works because it was compiled with a slightly newer version of gcc than what i currently mm-hmm. have on debian 11 <laughs> and uh okay we might not have captions for a little while because I got to test out OBS 28 and find out what's going to catch on fire. But yeah, it's been yeah. pretty interesting. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun, but you got it working, Ben. That's the important thing in all the web sockets. And Well, I learn yeah. things, right? I <laughs> yeah. learn things. Like that is a, think about the value out of that. You know, it feels good. As much as you really don't like a problem, I can't be alone. I got to assume a lot of you out there especially when you're in the middle of something and you're getting time crunched you're like ah there's a part of your brain that loves it it's like this is awesome i'm having yeah. a great time and love the tinkering <laughs> like that pressure like yeah. that pressure but if you want to play it nice and smooth easy and safe ubuntu might be for you yes so yeah so the first point release of ubuntu 22.04 LTS is now available to download. And of course, it is Ubuntu 22.04.1. LTS combines, this release combines all the bug fixes, app updates, performance tweaks, and security patches rolled out to the Jammy Jellyfish version since its April debut. And there's a lot of, actually, a lot of major changes, on, honestly, with this version. Uh, the snap packaged version of Firefox should start a little faster now that Ubuntu and Canonical is working on the with Mozilla on the the speed of the snap uh, for Ubuntu when you first launch it. And there's updated NVIDIA graphics drivers. It also has the latest GNOME Shell 42 point release. And this really really big change. Ubuntu 22.04.1 LTS defaults to Wayland on hybrid systems with NVIDIA graphics drivers, but defaults to Xorg for non-hybrid systems with NVIDIA graphics. That's going to be kind of it's interesting. very interesting, yeah. <laughs> Mainly from the setback and like, is that going to work? Yeah. Finally? Maybe? Yeah. And, you know, I've I've... You can go in if you um, log out in, in the login manager. You can uh, actually change uh, to whether you want to use Wayland or X, Xord um, on on previous distro on previous releases. So I've been playing with it a bit, and it's getting more and more stable, which is really nice. And um, yeah, there's just oh, it, it it is a huge huge jump though. <laughs> It is uh, a couple of things in this. I mean, being a point release is, I was talking about this before we um, started recording. This point release, when I was um, playing around with Ubuntu back in the day, was definitely what I waited for after any update. Like, let's wait until they get the point release out. Why do you want to do that? Because not everything goes smoothly after a major release or a major update. And like, let's wait for that point one. 
And that's always a good, and that's what mm -hmm. the job is. And you might be wondering, yeah. well, how do I install this? You don't. That's part of your update packages. You already have it if your system is currently up to date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what's really, really nice. Um, uh, so, but if you're running uh, the previous LTS 20.04 Focal Fossa or the previous short term release 21.10 Impish Injury, then you can expect to receive a 22.04 update notification anytime now. In fact, a lot of people already have. Oh, you should be getting that notification. And if soon. Windows has taught you anything, you click ignore. <laughs> ah, no, not with Linux, <laughs> especially the Ubuntu um, LTS upgrades have, have been really super smooth. They have been the last five, six years, just been super smooth. In fact, well, I've I, got to update a, a 20.04 system. And yeah, if I'm, I'm on a LTS to system, mm -hmm. I'm not upgrading anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got a new LTS out? Oh, that's adorable. Have fun with it. <laughs> but, you know, if you're running an LTS intentionally, you already know that. I'm not telling you anything new. Yeah. And as usual, you can go and uh, grab one of the installation images for the point release and go to the downloads page and you can get a new uh, image of 22.04.1 there. Mm -hmm. So you can just install directly from that point release. So do you think you get in trouble if uh, you buy a brand new System76 laptop and you put Ubuntu on it? Do they call you up <laughs> no. and they're like, nope, 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 we, uh, you got to send it back, you can't do that. <laughs> well, Ubuntu 22.04 LTS is one of the options with uh, Pop OS 22.04 LTS on the System76 computers and laptops, including the Galago Pro. So the fine folks at System76, the makers of awesome computers and laptops powered by our wonderful Linux, have a new version of their Galago Pro Slim and Light laptop available. And the updated Galago Pro specs are it has a 14-inch 1080p matte display monitor, 12th gen Intel Core i5 or i7, Intel Iris Xe graphics, up to 64 gigabytes of memory, System76 open firmware, and gigabit Ethernet, Wi-Fi 6, and Bluetooth 5, among all the usual USB ports as well. This is just, I, I was so happy to see that they pretty quickly got the, the uh, 12th gen version out. And I actually configured a Galago Pro that I'm, interested in buying that has 16 um, gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabyte NVMe drive for just over $1,000, $1,127. And because I'm in the market for a very light and powerful laptop to travel and go to Linux conferences with, uh, this one is definitely at the top of my list. Because um, I, I, I like the look of it. I like the silver color and it's just a, it's just a nice laptop. Well, I like that they have an option um, to pick the 11th gen because... Very nice. You get a little discount on that too as well. $100 off and you don't yeah. have to deal with the nightmare that is until, until 12th gen on Linux right now. It's not pretty. It's not yeah. a good experience. And if somebody tells you different than that, they're lying to you. <laughs> um, you know, you got to be running like kernel 518 to... Uh, even yeah. get your access on that uh, thread director stuff that's going on right now. I'm not saying that these won't work or anything like that. I'm just saying there's still a lot of work to be done in that area. But like mm -hmm. Jill, you know, mm -hmm. I put one together that I would begrudgingly carry around just because I wouldn't want to carry around a laptop. But if you're like, Vin, you have to carry around a laptop. And uh, I think I ended up about 1500 bucks. That's not yeah. bad at no. all. You're always surprised because... You think about System76, it's kind of like a semi-boutique, you know, PC manufacturer. And you're like, oh, it's probably going to be paying a bit more for that. And I'm like, hmm, 1500 bucks for one? And while Joe was talking, mm -hmm. I went through it and I'm like, okay, let's just build the YOLO version. 2600 bucks. Uh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> now, admittedly, me and Joe come from a different time. We're like, $2,600 for a laptop would be cheap, period. But, yeah. you know, $2,600, like, okay, and that, that's maxed out. That's RAM maxed out. That's storage maxed out. Uh, admittedly, I didn't get the extra monitor or the um, uh, yeah. keyboard, <laughs> but I did get pick the four-year warranty on that. And then I yeah. went together. Yeah. 
So, and you get a system 76 for the support and other niceties, like Absolutely. their open source firmware, which is just yeah. brilliant. Huge fan of that. It's got a matte screen, which should be standard. Glossy screens on laptops are criminal. Uh -huh. your, period. I agree. <laughs> and I agree. Again, I do want to say there is a flash sale on the 11th gen right now. So if you are looking for a laptop, there's nothing wrong with the 11th gen. And um, it did get me looking around, though, because I'm taking little baby steps of getting into the market of looking for a new main box in the studio, which is Threadbooper. Threadbooper is yeah. a first gen baby thread ripper because I didn't need the thread ripping so much. What I needed was all those PCIe lanes for capture cards and fiber optic stuff. So I went looking around system 76. I'm like, you know, because mm -hmm. thread ripper, you know, the latest thread ripper, it's a dead end. AMD's already came out and said, no more after what's already been made. Going forward, we're only doing thread ripper pro. I'm like, well, fine. If I'm going to buy a new thread ripper, it's got to be a thread ripper pro. Those are eye wateringly expensive. Like we're talking, yeah. welcome back to thousand dollar motherboards, sixteen hundred dollar CPUs. Which, uh, I didn't see an option. Maybe, maybe in some system seventy six is working on though. Maybe they're going to have a because that's slowly rolling out even on the consumer end ability to buy the Threadripper yeah. Pros outside of like from just Lenovo was the only place up until very recently. I'd like to see that. I don't know what the market is. For like workstation, like high end workstation stuff like that. You know, I saw like a dual Xeon type things, but I don't want to stick with AMD. So, uh, yeah, that I'm going to keep an eye out for that because I, I think that'd be a nice addition to have a Threadripper Pro option in the, oh. uh, yeah, I mean, having like, that Thelio would be so sweet. With that, <laughs> and you can get two GPUs then or three or four. <laughs> for what? <laughs> well, you never know what you're going to See, this is the difference for. between me and Jill. I gotta yeah. have a reason to get something. <laughs> I'm like, I got a, yeah. I got a 3060 in this Threadripper. Why? Because it's all we need. Um, no, I, I, I'd like to see that. Uh, they probably will. They might be working on something like that right now. But to have like a nice little Atari 2600 color Threadripper, that'd be neat. And of course, they'd have to redesign the bike plate for yeah. that case and all that fun stuff. Well, I know they're working on a pink one because I talked to Emma and she said they're working on a pink one. So I told her I'm going to be very interested when that pink one comes out. <laughs> May and, all. and I'm wearing an orange System 76 shirt right now. I got it scale. I get one at scale just about every year. So this year I got the orange one and I love it. <laughs> here's what we need to bring back. We don't need RGB. I want somebody to, here's what I want to see. I want to see a resurgence of cold cathode lighting. Oh, Maybe System yeah. six, 76, you can, you can do something like that. Call it yeah. a throwback. Because there was nothing like having a straight up barbecue you if you touched it wrong electrical system inside your computer case back in the day. Yeah. That was awesome. Oh, boy. Right next to your home built water cooling. Um, <laughs> yeah, back in those early days of case mods. Oh, my goodness. I knew someone who put a neon light in their case and it Cold leaked. Cold cathode, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. the thing I did. Um, just, mm -hmm. But it wasn't for like, ooh, because it didn't blink. <laughs> like, it's lighting, isn't that neat? We didn't have fancy things like LEDs Yeah. back then. So, yeah, there's that new version of Linux. Out. What's Linux? Linux is a kernel. A lot of people get that wrong, but you know what? I will never get on to anyone when they refer to a distribution of Linux because, man, no one likes that person. It's like, well, actually, yeah. everyone. It, <laughs> because when they do that, and I'm like, well, don't you mean GNU Linux? GNU Linux, yes. <laughs> oh, man. No, There's oh, that. yeah, the well actually crowd does not respond well to getting well yeah. actually. <laughs> What we're talking about, though, Linux 6.0 has arrived. There's a whole article over in ZDNet about it, to which I'll go, okay, you know what? That's neat. That's kind of interesting. There's some things. There's some things in it, but, you know, uh, over 60% of everything that was updated in this, you can thank AMD for, because you're looking at uh, 13,000 change files. Most of that is yet another AMD GPU register dump. So, and there's some AI stuff thrown in there too. Uh, we missed out on 520. A little disappointed in that. We yeah. got a 420. We didn't Aww. get a 520 for um, 
Well, there was reasons. <laughs> no, not really. Linus said he didn't care. It's an arbitrary number. He just made it up. Don't care. He said, no. if you want to call it five, I'm reading off what Linus and Will yeah. wrote. <laughs> yeah, but I also said in the, uh, the article that this release was created to avoid the confusion of releases in the 20s, like uh, 5.20, you know, <laughs> 5.21, 5.22. He didn't want to go past the 20s. <laughs> so. We didn't get our 5.20, so I feel you out there. I feel yeah. you, but we got 6.0 RC1. It's a thing. And unfortunately, we got to say goodbye to our 5X codename, Superb Owl. Yeah. Is no more. True. It's gone. Mm -hmm. We got a 60 series, which, you know, Superb Owl was a silly name. It didn't <laughs> really like show the Linux community as professionals as we are. You know, I always felt it was, you know, people like, oh, well, your codename for your Linux is Superb Owl. How adult and responsible is that? Yeah. <laughs> So we're finally going to do something about that. The code name for 6.0 is Herder. I'm a ninja sloth. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not even kidding. That's hilarious, actually. <laughs> oh, that's their sense of humor. I love it. <laughs> so we can finally so be taken as serious business professionals. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, most of the updates um, in this release uh, are improvements to the GPU networking and sound. And uh, Linus says the rusty bits are actually coming soon. So that'll be cool to look forward to. So that's going to happen in this series. You know, I'm looking forward to the rust <laughs> thing, but kind of like I would watch a car race. I'm like, let's just see what happens. Um, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Herder, I'm a ninja sloth. That's just going to be the show title. All right. The order. Yeah, that um, is that is awesome. <laughs> I got to remember Herder, ninja sloth. <laughs> Maybe you at home. I got to get my prop. I've wanted to install a. Okay, first of all, we all know sound doesn't work on Linux. Like you're not. We're communicating telepathically right now, live. You know, from Los Angeles, from Atlanta. Yeah. To your home. Um. But maybe you've actually wanted to install a professional sound card, sound device. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, but Vin, I have a focus right, a little red, you know, the YouTuber special. I have a professional. I said professional. Not to take anything away from these. These are little commodity devices and they're great for, you know, doing things like this. But if you need something with like insane features, high capacity, you probably don't even think about Linux. You're like, well, you know, Twitter told me sound just doesn't work on Linux. Like, why would I even bother? Getting uh, like a studio quality mastering converter set, it just wouldn't work at all. And you would be wrong. Now, I know what you're thinking. Those, those of you looking at the video of this, mm -hmm. that cannot be a professional sound card because it doesn't have RGB on it. It doesn't yeah. blink <laughs> and it doesn't have like big comical, useless, do nothing at all capacitor sticking out of it. And I've been told. <laughs> by Asus and other companies, Sound Blaster, that that is a baseline requirement professional sound. And it's not. Um, so, if you've ever wanted to install a professional sound, look, there's my little opening video. I can probably cut to the chase right here. This is how it goes. It's not as bad as you might think it is. And this is legitimately a studio quality mastering converter. This is a format converter before you would even call it an interface. It is to date in 2022, one of the biggest and baddest audio interfaces available on the market. That's why it's kind of neat because we're playing with something new and it's replacing. If you look on the right on the video there, the 9632 from 2003 that I was running in the studio now you do have to compile drivers that might be an issue if you're not into that uh we were joking on saturday because wolffire released a video of how to compile the source code for overgrowth and they did it from windows and i was like no wonder windows people are traumatized from like when you bring up compiling source code that was a nightmare it was like a 23 minute video I'm like i could have done that in 35 seconds under linux but yeah i walked through that and just show you how to get everything set up, compiled, how it runs with Jack, benchmarking it, showing you some of the cool things it can do. And I take it out of a box because you have to do that if you do a YouTube video. You know, yeah. you just got to walk through that. 
but I have a guide. And the story behind this was mm -hmm. kind of interesting. At the beginning, there's a configuration panel where you can set all your inputs and your outputs and you know phone levels and all that there's the mixer that you can use with it if you want which is kind of a funny story because we're still waiting on an updated version of that that is the mixer original mixer from 2003 that still works with rb hardware brand new oh, device wow. yeah. yeah still works setting it up with the jack and for whatever reason now i kind of joke you can use this as a regular sound card with pulse audio if you want bragging rights <laughs> among all of your friends and be like my sound card that I just have my headphones plugged into is better than yours. And you would be right. You, yeah. could. you can use it as a sound card. And I wanted to joke about that until I went on to the RME forums and some people have bought these, not as a like 17.1 audio surround sound controller for their home theater, but as their PC sound card. Oh, yeah. That's if kind you, of something I would probably do some. <laughs> you say that, and these things are $999. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know what, Jill? Um, I, <laughs> no. if, somebody, if you plugged those like $8 headphones into this, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> sounds I had amazing. A, when I started here on, on LWW, I had a professional series one um that i plugged in my xlr mic into but i didn't use that as a sound card <laughs> it was just for <laughs> for doing streaming <laughs> but i could use the a sound card absolutely can uh yeah. if you want to go through <laughs> take a look at it i tried to document it this was kind of interesting because the card that came out before this was just the rme aio and it's been out for about five or six years and army discontinued it and i'm like okay We've had a good run, and it was based on Smolder Tech, but it was in PCIe mm. format. And the gentleman who made the drivers for this was using them for broadcast. He used them for local broadcasting and live streams and stuff like that. Nice. Made him hangry. Was like, why, why are you just this? Because they released the AIO Pro. He plugged it in and like, well, that doesn't work under Linux. And this was kind of uh. shocking because... RME has provided the technical documentation to Linux driver developers for 22 years. He was like, RME, what's wrong with this? And RME is like, oh, I mean, do you want the source code for the drivers or anything? Fortunately, he was the right guy, though. He was like, uh, yeah, give it to me. I'll write the drivers. So he uh, created the kernel drivers, and they're up on the GitHub with configuration utility and all that. And now we oh, have awesome. uh, the AIO Pro. And speaking of backwards compatibility, that's something I tried to point out in the video the like balanced breakout cables from the 22 year old 9632 that i was using pin compatible just mm. unplug it from that one plug it into the brand new one still works everything's the same. oh that's nice oh that's really nice the dongle worked <laughs> yeah you get that you get that yeah. support i mean that you, you roughly what you're paying for with the army stuff is that longevity of support because they still make the 9632. You can still go out and buy one new. You know, you got a product with a long, long runway. Unless you bought the AIO, then you're upset. So, mm -hmm. yeah, go check that out. It's over at linuxgamecast.com. I like doing stuff like that. That's always nice to have like a little Halo product. If, you know, you run into the person's like Linux audio and Linux, bah, doesn't mean you show them that video and be like, that's better than what you have. Yeah, <laughs> true that. <laughs> just watch him get angry uh but <laughs> don't do that that's mean i'm just saying i would never do anything like that um uh, that makes more sense if you watch the video version check it out uh, with your support we're able to do things like that over at patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast we get a bunch of membership levels filled with a bunch of different rewards that you can get up to and including access to our super secret discord that we hang out the other seven days a week that's our slack that's where we have all of the behind the scenes come from and you would think that we would be smart nay intelligent enough to have like a super private one for them. no we don't that's just where everything just gets dumped with about 70 or 80 of your closest linux loving miscreant friends yeah of course we have ircs <laughs> we got the twitch chat and everything's tied together for the live show so it doesn't matter where you're at we can hear you you can also pop in from a Twitch subscription and you can hang out with me and Jill 
mm-hmm. not just on Wednesdays, but on Tuesdays and Fridays where we Yay. do the Trek Manias. And that is, it's our vintage retro gaming night with an yeah. 11-year-old racing title <laughs> that no one seemed to like. But we like it. We got a custom server set up for it. And we do 14 new tracks each and every week. And we practice. We mm-hmm. call ourselves the filthy casuals because you're like, what? I mean, I have like an hour, two hours a week to put into yeah, this in the exactly. playroom. Yeah, it's physics <laughs> platforming. It's just an excuse to get together, talk about Linuxy things and movies and whatever we got going on while having a race. And we do like air quote, like actual contest on Fridays with a points match where it doesn't matter if you're the fastest, you just got to get around and collect the most points. So it just means you got to finish. And you can win some free games. We try to spice it up in the after shows and we'll be playing a little bit of turbo golf racing. It's just kind of like a community night with physics platforming. I think it's kind of fun. I don't know if Jill likes it or not. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Oh, it's become one of my favorite games. And it's nice that I can just sit down for a couple hours and feel pretty confident that I'll make it around the tracks and do halfway decent times. So, <laughs> nice. Yeah, exactly. And like, uh, you know, if <laughs> my old self can do it, you can too. So, yeah. <laughs> um, think about it like that. We got a couple of new patrons we should have thanked last week, but I've been yeah. scrambling. Also, hang on. I, w- I want to make an apology to uh, all of our Death Note and above patrons. I did not get the um, show notes out for this show this week. Oh. My okay. bad. That was mm-hmm. a senior moment on a, <laughs> your friendly, lovable old man, Ben. But we do need to thank two new patrons, too. Yeah. We got Sacred Egg and Live Tea. Yeah, thank you so much. They became our patrons two weeks ago, and mm-hmm. uh, we're we're we, you got thanked on Linux Gamecast, and now LWW. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Because Ben had a senior moment. It took a week. <laughs> now, have you ever been followed? Have you ever been tracked? Or have you ever done role reaver? Have you ever been spying on somebody? it could be a problem yeah (laughs) brings us to our tracking pie it's more like a tracking cake but yeah it's pretty cool it's anti-tracking because you know what just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not following you you got to keep that in mind but this article comes from wired and it's talking about you know for about 200 bucks you can build a handy tool that scans for nearby devices. It's going to send you an alert if what it does is looking for like the same Wi-Fi hotspots, but also phones in a 20-minute window. It'll give you a nice little display notification, be like, you're being followed, man. I'd love it if it had that voice. That'd be even better. So in <laughs> theory, this would in fact let you know that you're being tailed or possibly just driving in normal LA traffic, but it fits in a shoebox, something the size of a shoebox, runs on a Pi 3, portable charger, gives it the power. It's got a nice handy touch screen to show you those alerts. Now it does include an ignore list. So you'd be like, okay, these, this is not something actually following me around or, you know, maybe another one of your devices or something like that. Now mm. I was reading through that. Now the source is available for this. I do have that chasing your tail, a tool for using wireless signals to see if you're being followed. Oh no, it's released under the MIT. This was part of DEF CON that yeah. happened, which was always, always a fun event. Um, yeah. I read through that. Like, thanks for the tips. You know, I think we all know now after reading through this and learning about it, to power down our mobile devices before tailing people. Probably a good idea. So they don't mm-hmm. detect you. And, uh, or I mean, you know, just be old fashioned. Be old, just <laughs> do it the old fashioned way. Put a couple of air tags behind their license plate, you know, like a normal yeah. person. <laughs> you don't have to follow them around. There you go. <laughs> and I like the title of his, of uh, Matt Edmondson's talk chasing your tail with the raspberry pi i thought that was a a a great description of his project and what's cool is at the black hat security conference uh where he presented his research um there is actually slides from the presentation to find out more information and i read through those really really fascinating and this is just honestly a really amazing project uh edmondson actually says that in the future the device could be modified to send a text alert instead of showing them on the screen. And also a GPS unit could be added so you can see where you were when you were being tracked. 
And something then I actually found really, really fascinating. He is also interested in adding the capability to detect tire pressure monitoring systems that could show reoccurring nearby vehicles. Wow. <laughs> it is amazing our AI has gotten so good. <laughs> My, uh, again, air tags behind the license plates, kids. Uh, yeah. Now, my first thought about this was uh, the way my brain works. Like, oh, this would be a very highly irresponsible, incredibly dangerous game to play with your friends if they could track you. Like, keep away. Like, get all of your friends' SSIDs and that would go to be the cool. Yeah. No, it would it'd be horribly. Don't do it. Do <laughs> not do it. I'm just saying that would be fun. Maybe somebody should make a video game based around that. Ah, uh, yes. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure away. that's something they could probably uh, play with at DEF CON for sure, or the next Southern California Linux Expo. That would be a good game to play. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> if you're being followed, like maybe, maybe you want to set up something like this. I don't ever pay any attention. Like, if you following follow me, that's great. Like, whatever. Um, I used to have a not like maybe I would try or like think, you know, especially after you watch like a movie. You're like, oh, maybe yeah. I should check my mirror. I'm like, oh, is that a car? <laughs> maybe I'm going to turn left here, turn right here just to see if they, then what do you do? Then they turn left or right. Then you got a problem. <laughs> like, okay, they <laughs> probably were just going the same way anyway. Brain, quit panicking. You make the other turn. Um, yeah, yeah it's well, always is- fun to see stuff like this. Yeah, this is really good for, you know, people in top secret government work, or PIs and and uh, people who need, you know, to, to track criminals or, you know. It, Stalkers. It, it, yeah. <laughs> bad people. <laughs> track bad people. <laughs> oh, man. That's the thing. But, hey, we've already filled up our time, Joe. We got to run okay. out of here kicking and screaming. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> tune in and you know what follow us don't build a raspberry pi thing throw it away (laughs) follow us on the social medias and the alerts and all that all the fun things that are involved with that but oh guess i didn't include a credits button Uh oh Uh oh i gotta do it manually prepare yourselves let's see if i still remember how where are the credits i don't see there's the the music i see the music there they are i did last week's credits you get to read You get to read the credits this week, Joe. Yeah. So you were just so talking is, about um, <laughs> the Linux Gamecast advisors. Our advisors are Omegas, our Theron, our executive producers, Barbrandt, Scott M, Atomic, Mike G, Empty, Drummer, Kahuka, George, Pebble, Taraz, Unoid, uh, Chicago, Patrons, Abstraction, Sea Monsters, Ronaldo L, Ryder <laughs> Exima, Trud Kills, Nubbin. I've lost it. I do it. want to thank all of our Death Notes. Uh, Jason Bacon, <laughs> Foxy's Fine, Doom 2 One, Smashly, Kim, Basil, Nova K, uh, Marsen. We got of Eastwick in there. We got Alex in there. <laughs> That's two. <laughs> yeah. Game of Tron's in there. Me and Steve, me and my husband are in there. We've been in there for years and years. <laughs> and Mir's in there. Tom Sacred Egg, and of course, love it, our latest. Aww. And that's our fine, upstanding cannibals. That's the wall behind me. Everyone who's picked up for something picked up a thing in the studio. Thank you, each and every one of you. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Have <laughs> a great rest of your week. This was a nice Bye, little love break you all. from reality. <laughs> but yes. we'll be back next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>